Welcome to A Jew, A Muslim, and A Christian. I'm Rabbi Hillel Cohn. My name is Imad Bayoun, and I'm a Muslim. My name is Father Mike Manning. I'm a Catholic priest. One of the things that happens with uh, our various faith communities, religions, and so on, is that we're subjected to a number of myths. Oh, yes. Um, troublesome myths. Yes. Things that people misunderstand about us. For example, uh, Jews who have for long thought of themselves or been spoken of as a chosen people have suffered from the troublesome myth that asserting your chosenness is to uh, perhaps assert your superiority over others. That's a troublesome myth. What are some myths that are troublesome to you as a Christian Catholic? One of the things that I run into a lot is, is the place that we place, uh, or the, the position we put Mary, for example, the mother of Jesus. Um, a lot of times people think that we equate Mary with Jesus, you know, that she is divine and she is the one to whom we go and we pray and she's the one that gives us uh, what we pray for, which is wrong, it, it's, it's not true. The other one, and uh, you, you reminded me of this before we began, this idea of going to confession, that on Saturday night you can go to confession and you can confess your sins, but that opens the door that then on Sunday and Monday you can do all the sinning you want as long as you get back and confess again. That whole idea of really not being responsible and, and being centered of really changing my life is something that oftentimes it's a myth. When I spoke about Jews as the chosen people, I'm reminded of that uh, wonderful line from Fiddler on the Roof where Tevye says, God, if we're your chosen people, would you mind choosing someone else for a while? <laughs> but what are some myths that uh, are troublesome to uh, Muslims? You know, I think when it comes to misconception, probably uh, Islam may claim the lion's share. And I think uh, these days, probably the most common one, of course, for the last probably uh, 15, 20 years, is the concept of jihad and extremism. Uh, as to how that is defined in a specific way, when jihad actually is a more comprehensive, actually, concept. That, uh, and the greatest form of that jihad, jihad means striving, by the way, or struggle. The greatest form of that is really the struggle with oneself. Then this is, uh, when you're dealing with your parents, this is also called a jihad. I mean, obviously, you're not waging a war against your parents, you know. When you're dealing with your wife, that is called also a, a jihad, with your children, with any uh, form where you have to strive, basically, to attain some form of a perfection, that is a jihad. So it's a concept. And I think, uh, politically, sometimes it's defined in a certain way, and uh, to place you in a certain uh, position, I think. And um, it is fueled, fueled also by the ignorance of some Muslims. Of, I mean, I'm not going to de deny that as to uh, that have a deficient understanding of the religion itself. Do we do enough to dispel those misunderstandings mm -hmm. or those myths? You know, we try. I think you, you keep trying, and I think this is a lifelong uh, striving. It's a jihad, a lifelong jihad. Okay, okay. Uh, actually, uh, so long as you have ignorance, you have stereotypes. So long as I'm so afraid of you, I'm so afraid of knowing you or reaching out to you, I'm going to form all sorts of uh, preconception, pre-ideas about you, the best way is for me to connect with you directly. What about, uh, how does Christianity deal with those troublesome myths? The only thing that I can do is whenever I get a chance to speak, I try to explain that. Sure. And so if, if I can get together with a group of people, especially with regard to, let's say, this thing about Mary, to really say the truth about Mary. And, and one time, it was interesting, I was on an evangelical television show, and um, I, the, the evangelical was across from me, and oftentimes that image of Mary is one of, we've put her on an equality with Jesus. And I, I said this statement. I said, Mary is nothing without Jesus. And there was a silence all of a sudden on the television set. He looked at me, a pause, and he turned to me again. He said, would you say that again? You know? And I said, Mary is nothing without Jesus. And there was almost like this, this burst of a bubble of just this ignorance of thinking that somehow, that, but the other problem is, you know, the other problem is that sometimes you can talk to Christians, or to talk to Catholics, rather, and uh, they can spend 95% of their time talking about Mary and 5% time talking about Jesus. And you come and say, well, you know, of course, Jesus, you know, Mary isn't equal to Jesus. But sometimes our spirituality and our, our, our but we, we make the mistake of really misleading people by the attitudes and the conversations that we have 
about our religious so beliefs. So we play a role in that, I yeah. think, sometimes let, ourselves. Let me return for a moment, you know, and I talked about the myth of Jews as a chosen people that it's taken to be a proclamation of superiority. Um, I think a better way to understand it is that Jews, my ancestors, were a choosing people. They chose a particular way of life that, by the way, was very, I would say, subversive. It was out of keeping with the times in which they lived. To call for justice in a world that thrived on injustice, on authoritarianism, uh, this was a, a, a conscious choice that, yes, involved in making that choice is to give certain things up, um, to give a little bit of your own self-interest up yeah. for the welfare yeah. of the society in which you live. So I like that concept of being a choosing people, a people that chose a particular way of life, not necessarily saying that it was a way of life that you needed to embrace or that you needed to embrace, but one that we felt enabled us to become more wholesome and holy human beings. And everybody if, is a choosing people in that regard, right? Well, so we can and, consider and ourselves to be choosing people that, you know, in that Every regard. Jew is a Jew by choice, that you choose to be a Jew. You choose a particular way of life. A second thing that I was just going to point out, a uh, myth, is that Jews are a race. And of course, the people who took that most seriously in the 20th century were the Nazis, who said not only were Jews a race, but they were an Aryan race or a, an inferior race. A race is a group of people who are bound together by certain common physical characteristics. You can only be born into a race, you can never get out of that race. Uh, so Jews are not a race, nor are they really uh, a, a nation or a nationality. And even I think it's a stretch to call Jews, from my point of view, a religion, because we are primarily a civilization or a people with all the earmarks of a civilization. So people saying that, you know, Jews are a race, whether they consider them to be an inferior race or not, that's a troublesome myth, which I hope people would understand just doesn't make any sense. One of the things that, uh, as you were talking about the chosen people, uh, as a Christian, uh, we struggle with that also, uh, because we believe that through Christ and through his messiahship, we have become the chosen people. Right. But that You became the true Israel. Pre pre precisely. And that leads us down to some real, real yeah, dangers, yeah. because that can cause all kind of separations and that idea that we're better than you are because yes. of well, God loves us more than he loves you. And that's the, that's the big, big problem of religion, sure. isn't it? You know, what I'm convinced I, of sure. saying God loves me more than he loves you. And right. I think when a person that? feels that I'm inherently, genetically, whatever, better than everybody else yeah. because of my race, because of my background, because of my label or whatever, actually, that becomes, I think, problematic. Uh, you know, there's a, there's a statement in the Quran that says, do not feel and distrust and you are the highest if you are believers. And I think I like this statement that it does not tie it up with a personal characteristic, but it's something that the person actually has, the person actually has taken on. So in other words, this does not make me better, but it puts a, an added responsibility on me because I have this belief, and it's my job to measure up to that belief. Mm -hmm. It is my job to appreciate it. And then, only then, it would make me better than what I was before, yeah. than what I was before. But not by nature of my genes, of my background, or whatever, automatically it would make me a better person. I would go back to what I mentioned earlier, is that the criterion here is piety. The verse that says that we made you into tribe, it says, O people, O mankind, we made you into tribes and nations, so you may know one another, the best among you, or the most beloved among you to God, is the most pious. What's pious mean? The one that has this righteousness, that has this God consciousness. Mm -hmm. So this makes the criterion of who's better than whom. It is not who is the more male or the more female or the more white or the more green, or, but it's actually, it says, the best among you is the one that is most pious, the most God conscious. Well, but that involves, to become God conscious would involve making choices in your life. That's a jihad there, right. <laughs> going right. back right. to what well, I mentioned. Then, then it's a continuous important. jihad, you know, with yourself, you know, with, with everything that's around you. Yeah, well, the fact is that we are subjected to misunderstandings, sure. to myths, to stereotypes, mm. and one of the ways in which we can counteract that, of course, is through uh, intelligent discourse, 
and like this. People, well, <laughs> like this, hopefully yes. this would be helpful to the people who are yes, watching it, yes, yes. that we need to find out what those sure. myths are and get rid of them. Uh, it's a big challenge for us, is, whatever course. the community we are a part of. So we thank you and, and hope that some of those myths can be undone. Mm.